So, the newest drone regulations are coming into effect on June 1st, 2019, and these regulations in Canada require that all drone pilots flying drones weighing between 250 grams and 25 kilograms pass a test. Now, there are two test categories, the advanced or the basic. If you want to fly in uncontrolled airspace, you can do so with the basic certification. But if you want to fly in controlled airspace, close to people or possibly over people, you need to get the advanced certification. The reason for these new regulations is because Transport Canada says that they want to ensure safety. And that's a good thing. I think everyone who flies a drone wants the hobby to be safe and we don't want people to do stupid things. So the fact that Transport Canada decided to have some oversight is a good thing. Ultimately it's going to be beneficial for everyone. I don't think that there's any responsible drone flyer out there who would not go along with this. And it doesn't matter whether you're a recreational or you're a commercial drone operator, flying safely is of paramount importance. Now, Transport Canada decided to have everyone take a test. It doesn't matter whether you're trying for the basic certification or the advanced certification. You have to take a test, although the test for the basic certification is not as difficult as the test for the advanced certification. As I understand it, passing a test is about making sure that a person has the necessary knowledge to know what is allowed and what is not allowed. It doesn't matter what subject we're talking about. The point of writing a test is to ensure that a person has knowledge that the person has studied the material that's necessary to pass the test and now is able to answer the questions and has the appropriate knowledge to get a passing grade. So this brings me back to Transport Canada because Transport Canada's approach to having drone flyers take a test seems ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. They want every drone flyer who flies a drone weighing more than 250 grams to write a test, but they will not tell you what you need to know to pass the test. There is no guide with specific information that a person needs to know in order to pass the test. There's no way to study for the test because they haven't given you the proper material to actually know what is going to be on the test and ultimately get a good mark. Now, I don't know about you, but it seems to me that the whole point of a test is to study the necessary material so that when you write the test, you're prepared and are able to pass the test. That's the way it works. If a teacher gives his or her students a test, they provide the students with the necessary resources to study so that they can gain the knowledge which will ultimately allow them to write the test successfully. Now, this brings me back to Transport Canada. Isn't the whole point of these regulations to make sure that people have the necessary knowledge to fly safely. That's what Transport Canada says is the purpose of this whole thing. That's the goal, for people to fly safely, for people to know what they can and cannot do. Now, if that's the goal, why is Transport Canada making it so difficult to actually study? There's a study guide of sorts online that gives you the categories of things that you need to know but none of the specific information. And there's no indication really, as far as I can see, 
as to where you need to go to find the specific knowledge that you'll need to know in order to pass the test. So how's a person supposed to study? The Transport Canada website is incredibly confusing and difficult to navigate. When asked about study guides during his initial press conference when he laid out the new regulations, Mark Arno said this uh, about how a person can pass the test. Will the government provide study aids for people who want to take that test? Uh, one of the things that we're encouraging, we did not make the um, training mandatory prior to taking the test, but uh, there uh, are two options. Uh, one, one option is to go to, uh, there are a number of uh, flight schools, drone flight schools across the country, and we would encourage people who are serious about operating their drones uh, to take some of that training before they actually do the exams. There's a lot of useful information uh, that's on the website, but if somebody wants to uh, do a little bit of training beforehand, before they actually start using their drone, we would encourage them to contact the flight training schools. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with going to drone school. If a person wants to go to drone school, that certainly is an option, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, it is expensive, and if you're a basic flyer, you shouldn't have to dish out five or six hundred dollars to learn the material. It should be an option, sure, to go to go drone school, but the study material should be online so that a person can do it himself or herself without having to go to drone school. Now, it seems to me that what Transport Canada is doing is actually trying to force people to go to drone school. And I think this is wrong because a person can study the material by himself. They don't need to go to drone school. If they prefer to go to drone school, that's fine. But uh, Transport Canada should, shouldn't be forcing people to spend four, five, six hundred dollars to go to drone school. And another thing is that where I live, there aren't a lot of drone schools around. There's only one or two, and they're actually quite uh, far away from where I live. And the kind of stuff that they do is more focused on commercial flyers than it is on recreational flyers. So even if I wanted to go to a drone school, it actually isn't that easy. So what Transport Canada needs to do is give people the material that they need to study in order to pass the test. Just the way it works in school. A teacher gives students material to learn and then there's a test and the students need to study the material and if they study the material they have a good chance of passing the test. It's really quite simple. Transport Canada should not make people jump through hoops to figure out what they need to study. So as far as the way the online tests have been set up by Transport Canada they definitely get a fail. Mm. And it's really too bad because I think that for the most part what Transport Canada has done is reasonable but they always get something wrong and this is something that they got wrong. They need to make study materials available so that people can study and then pass the test. Now a couple of days ago I called Transport Canada and asked about the online tests and the study guides. I'm going to play what they told me in its entirety. But before I do that, I just want to give a shout out to another YouTuber, Don Joyce, who put together a study guide based on his experience taking the basic test. Don basically did a lot of the work for Transport Canada and put together a well-organized and comprehensive study guide. So go check out his channel and give Don a big thumbs up for doing such an amazing job. Anyway, here's my conversation with Transport Canada. You take the 
examination online. But at this point, there are no study guides. And um, it seems to me that in order to take a test, it's important to have something to study. But there are no study guides for the basic or advanced tests. So how are you supposed to take a test if you have no clue what to study? So there's not an official study guide that's been published yet. Okay, can you, can, I'm sorry, can you just speak up? I can hardly hear you. My yeah, so there's <laughs> my no official study guide okay. that's been issued out yet. Okay. We did get a lot of inquiries of, you know, the public asking for some sort of study guide. Mm -hmm. So it's been sent off. They are going to review this this concern from the mm -hmm. public. Mm -hmm. But the online exam, all those questions on there, they are based on a publication that was issued out um, so basically it lets you know the criterias or the categories that you may or may not be tested on yes and that publication you can actually find online mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. the website if you want to um, take a look at it is the TP 15263 yes I, I did um, actually see that part it's where You've got the check marks for what you need to yeah. know for the advanced versus the basic. Um, yeah, correct. Yeah, so I did so see... That th sort of gives you a little bit of guidance on what you need to know mm -hmm. or don't need to know in terms of the exam that you're taking. Okay. Any additional study or research will have to be done by the individual. Okay, but that's a tall task because those categories are very broad and um, some of them are very cryptic as well. I'm a pretty intelligent person, I think, but uh, I still found it a little bit daunting um, to uh, figure out what the various categories mean. Uh, even the ones that are ticked for the basic knowledge test. Um, well, with the basic exam, there's only 35 multiple choice questions. Right. And so it's, you're getting like, you know, 1% of the question that's going to be tested on that category, that specific category. I understand that. Uh, but again, there's a lot of check marks in the document that you pointed out uh, I should look at um, mm -hmm. that apply to the basic uh, exam. And... Um, Yes, there are only 35 questions, but if I have to study all those uh, check marks um, to do the exam, and I don't know what questions they're going to ask, uh, that's very daunting. And um, the tests are also fairly, ex they're not expensive, but if you do more than two or three, they, it can add up the, the, the cost. Um, so, yes, I, I appreciate the fact that there's a, uh, guide with the categories, mm -hmm. but that doesn't really give you specific information as to what you need to study. But uh, you're saying that they're looking into that. Do you think that they will have an official study guide uh, for people to be able to read what they will need to know for the test? I don't know yet. Uh, it's definitely something that they are trying to work on. So I won't be able to give you a defi definitive answer. Okay. If they're going to come up with that guide or not, but we've definitely gotten have gotten a lot of inquiries. Okay. With with that concern. So let me know what you think about all this. Did Transport Canada drop the ball on not providing study guides? Do you think the way they've set it up now is just fine? If you do, please leave a comment explaining why. And of course, before you leave consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. I would really appreciate it. Take care for now, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.